last class we have discussed about user defined functions in c and today we are going to discuss about a special type of user defined function called recursive function recursive functions are very useful to solve certain programming problems which is inherently recursive in nature for example if you consider the program to find the permutations of a word without using recursive function it is a little difficult programming task but after this lecture when you try to use recursion you can see that the permutation problem can be easily solved with this motivation let us look at what are recursive functions in c programming language before we look at recursive function let us see how exactly memory management is done when you execute a c program which is actually implemented using a system data structure namely stack later in the data structure course you can learn more about stack but here we need to just know how that data structure is used to implement memory allocation for creating function instances in c programming language so we can try to understand how function instances are created on stack using an example here there is an example program with two functions main and max both are user defined so max is to find the maximum of two decimal integers and then main is just using that max function to find the largest of two decimal numbers a and b this is a very simple example the purpose is to understand how function instances are created on stack now suppose you execute this program then see that uh, this main is the first function to execute the moment you call the main function during the execution if you run that program you are in fact calling the main function the moment you call an instance of the main function is created on the stack there is something like a stack and this is what you already know in the memory you have to get memory allocated for decimal variables a b and largest a b and largest suppose that you are getting memory allotted like this assuming that two bytes is the requirement for a decimal integer and even though memory is allocated like this the access is made through this data structure stack so in the data structure you can view it like this i'm just uh, using a picture to explain what is a stack so in this stack for the main function an instance is created and there must be a variable created for a b largest and this is a special memory area to store the return point i will explain to you what is the return point okay later and also in this stack uh, you will get uh, you also need to know where uh, the executable file of this program you know that this program needs to be translated into binary and that is also getting stored but that is not the uh, topic for today so i am not going to discuss about the binary code where it is stored i am only trying to tell you where the variables are stored it's in the memory but the access is made through an in between data structure which is what is called a stack so the moment you try to access this variable is actually made through the stack in this stack 
it actually says that the value is 10. I, I'm assuming that now the value of decimal variable A is 10 and decimal variable B is 20. That's an assumption, okay? And in fact, in this stack, the address of the decimal variable A, which is 501, is stored. And DB, which is uh, 504, is stored. But for uh, the simplicity in discussion, I am directly using the value, okay? But you should uh, take it like, okay, what I am accessible, uh, sorry, what I am accessing from the stack is actually the address of the variable DA, DB and D out there, okay? But to, uh, for the purpose of discussion, I am not using that address, I am directly referring to the value. But just to tell you that, stack is the data structure through which your program accesses the variables in the program. Okay. So, in fact, here the stack gives you the address, but in the figure, I am directly showing the value. Please take it like that. Okay, so the moment uh, I execute this function, the, uh, sorry, the program, the main function is called. Whenever a function is called, an instance of that is created in memory and actually a record is created in the stack through which you can access the memory. So, here you will have the address of the variable DA, which is actually 500, but I am representing it using the value. But you have to access it from 501. Actually, what is here is 501. Okay. Now, it comes to the this statement for execution, and here you can see that in the RHS there is a function called. And from the last class, we know that now this function call should happen. So, the control should pass to the function max, okay. And the moment you do that, uh, the instance of max needs to be created. And now, suppose you call max and after the execution of max, the control should get back to this point. I am just using alpha to mark the return point. And in the program execution, there is something called program counter. You don't have to get worry about that. So, you know that oh, there is a mechanism which remembers the point to which the control needs to be returned. I am just marking it as alpha here just for simplicity in discussion for this example. Okay. So, I am just making a call. The function call happens. The moment the function call happens, an instance of max is created. Here you can see that the variables are decimal variables x, y and max are allocated memory and not that this access is made possible through another record on the stack which is for max. Remember here again, actually the addresses are stored but I am showing it in terms of the value. So, dx is creating, uh, created in memory, dy is created in memory and dmax is created and the access is made through this. Okay. So, actually here what you have is the address of dx, address of dy, address of dmax and uh, the return point. And here you can see that the return point is stored as alpha. And this is the thing which allows this function to return into this point because it stores here the return point to which point the function should return after completing its execution. Okay. Now, if here the function executes like this, the blue line shows the flow of control within a function. And now this is the condition checking. You can see that dx which is 10 is not greater than dy which is not 20. So, it is not correct. So, the control flows to the else part. And what is the statement? dmax which is not defined now is getting the value of dy which is 20. So, 20 is assigned to dmax. Then it comes to the return statement. From the previous lecture, you know that return statement is the one which takes the control back to the called function and it also returns the value of max. So, what will happen? The control will come back to this point. Why this point? Because in this stack, 
now this function instance is going to be finished or deleted and alpha tells it that okay the control should be taken back to what is called alpha so if you fire it so what happens you see that the instance of max is now deleted from the memory it's not existing now and the control gets back to this point why because alpha was stored on this stack and now not that rss which was this is now replaced to that replaced by the value of dmax which is 20 and now you are here if you execute that statement what will happen you will get d largest now undefined as the value 20 so that is what has happened now you are here and after that uh, suppose there is no other statement in the function main so you are finishing execution and you see that the moment it finishes its execution the instance of that main function is also getting deleted from the memory now from this example you can see that drawing the stack is enough to trace the execution of this function in fact there is no need to worry about uh, the memory layout so unless otherwise required we may not be drawing the memory layout we will be only using stack to trace the execution remember in this stack actually the memory addresses are stored through which the memory can be accessed but for simplicity i have used the value okay now before uh, going to recursive function a concrete example let us see how the program flow control flows through a program during the execution we can try to understand in terms of an example here you can see that there is a function foo and another function bar and uh, foo is calling bar, the function bar from two places inside the definition of foo so here we are not going to look at the stack or memory layout the purpose is to just see how the program control flows to these functions during execution suppose uh, you call or the main function calls foo then the control comes like this then it executes through foo until it reaches a function call then what happens the control jumps over to the function bar now suppose that bar executes like this initially a part of uh, bar is executed then it comes to this point and then uh, it's a loop it just enter the loop body and comes back to the loop control again and suppose that in this particular case the loop body is executed once more so two times it is executed and after that it jumps it comes out of the loop and execute the remaining part of the function bar and comes to the last point and after that what will happen either it's a return statement or automatically the control goes back to the called pro function okay then it progresses down and assume that it reaches its second call so what happens now again it goes to the function bar and at this time suppose it comes to the loop and without entering the loop it goes through this path and comes back okay then it goes through the remaining part and finishes and finally it returns to the point from where who was called so this is generally what happens when you execute a C program and that is what I said in the previous class a C program can be viewed as a set of communicating functions this is how the communication happens I think it's clear to you and with this let us move on to the next slide where I'm trying to tell you what is recursion for that let us see what is recursion in terms of the program flow control here is an example you can see that it's a function foo but inside the definition of foo there is a call to itself this is actually what is called recursion suppose you execute this program and the control comes to foo that is foo is being called 
and then naturally it will execute all the statements and reach to this particular statement and what will now happen is you already know it just goes to the function okay as if it is another function it just makes that call so it's just like a loop okay and suppose now in the second call to foo it and this is what is called recursion a process where a function calling itself is called recursion and there is direct and indirect recursion that i will tell you later and this is what is called recursion and now suppose the second time it is not is coming like this and not getting into the function call again maybe there is an if and only when that condition is satisfied it goes to this path and making this recursive call okay and in the second time it is not going through that path but it comes out and finally it moves on so this is what is called the uh, recursion now we can try to understand what exactly is recursion by using a concrete example and this example will make it clear what kind of a purpose is served by the stack data structure and here is an example which is to find the factorial of a number it's a recursive implementation so i name it as recursive factorial okay don't get worried about the code that we can see when we try to execute it suppose you try to execute now you calling i assume that you calling this function with the value of the argument as 3 the moment you call it you know that its instance is being created in this stack the variables are decimal variables n and temp and definitely return point is also required an instance of this is created not that this should be these should be the addresses but we are uh, just using the values that's it now it comes to this particular statement it's checking whether d and now it is 3 less than or equal to 1 or not not correct so it goes to the next statement and here is a function called to the same function so what will happen the control is now making a function call the same function with the value as uh, of the argument as 2 because it's d n minus 1 and not that now on the stack another instance of the same function is created now see there are two active instances of the same function or fact on the stack so uh there is uh, there are memory allocated for the first instance for dn and temp and also for the second instance okay and now see that the return point i am assuming that it is alpha it is also stored over here that means if you finish executing this instance you have to return to alpha later we can see how is it happening it comes to this again now dn is 2 is again evaluated to false and hence again it comes to this now what will happen again a call to r5 now the value is 2 so it will be 1 now see again a call the third instance is now getting created okay and the return point is again alpha because it's the same call now it comes to this statement and now you can see that in the active instance the, the last one on the stack is the active instance represented by this solid arrow in the last instance you can see that it is 1 so this condition is satisfied it comes to return statement so what will happen now it is going to return from the last instance on the stack and where to return to alpha of the previous instance so this is the previous instance so what will happen is one will be returned and this instance will be deleted see so returning to alpha the return statement kills the current which was the third instance of our fact and resume the next instance on the stack which is second and where from it is received from the point alpha which is given here okay that's why happening so you're coming to this particular statement what is it d temp is getting assigned as one one is the value there so now you can see that one is one you got here now the statement 
to be executed next is the next one which is again a return statement return means now you are going to return where to return given by this so what will happen dn is now two not that you are accessing through the stack so now the dn of this instance is two into d temp of this this distance is one so two into one is two which is returned to alpha and now you note that this instance is again killed okay now what will happen this two will be assigned to d temp so that is what is happened executed and two is designed over here now progressing to the next and where you will return what three into two six will be returned and that was the last instance so this will be the return point in the main function assume that in the main function from which you called our fact with dns3 so it's returning to the main function if you called it from the main function i think uh, you got it and if you want you can watch it again and understand how exactly recursive functions are executed and how stack helps in maintaining various instances of the same function on the stack at the same time now we can look at another uh, okay before another example what we have seen about recursion the process why we say function calls itself or it could be like a function for calling bar and from within bar it calls foo it is called indirect recursion or in other words if on the stack more than one instance of the same function is created it's recursion it can be direct call foo calling foo or indirect like foo calling bar and then bar calling foo or an indirection can go to a finite depth okay and it's used when a problem needs to do same computation on different instances of the problem like factorial and there must be a termination condition otherwise it will end up in a in an infinite loop and you so that uh, multiple instances of the same function may exist on the stack at the same time but it is costly because in terms of memory and execution speed will be more when compared to non recursive version okay and uh, maybe you can search in the internet and see why is it so i am leaving it as a homework exercise now we can see another concrete example for recursion so here is a recursive function to find the nth fibonacci value okay and i am giving it as an exercise to trace the execution of this function with the 5s argument and show the stack state generated during the execution so you just try to understand uh, how it executes for that maybe you mark this as return point alpha 1 and this as return point alpha 2 so you create the stack and just follow the execution and try to understand how exactly recursion happens and i'm giving three more exercise write a recursive function to find the number of digits in an unsigned integer another one write a recursive function to find the gcd of two integers and the last one write a recursive function to find the permutations of a word and this is the example which if you try to implement using recursion will tell you what is the power of recursion because you will get the logic in one minute and coding it is also very easy with a few lines less than five lines or uh, within 10 lines of code you can solve it very easily so today we have looked at a special type of uh, user defined function in c which is called a recursive function so what is a recursive function it's a function which calls itself maybe directly or indirectly 
So when I say indirectly, I mean the function A calls B and then B makes a call to A. Or it can be like A is calling B and B is calling C and C makes a call to A. It can be like that also. And uh, we saw how the data structure stack, which is exactly the data structure used to allocate or sorry, uh, used to store function instances even without recursion. And I hope uh, what we discussed is clear to you. Please uh, watch it many times and understand how recursion works. And not that any recursive function can be equivalently implemented using loops without recursion and vice versa. Thank you.